What's good, fam? Thanks for joining me, your host, Corey Cabri, on the Living Life on Purpose podcast, where we discuss various topics on how to apply God's principles to your everyday life. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. All right, so we're going to pick up where we had left off last week um, and just a continuation uh, the entire month about being, being, uh, being steadfast, being a witness, and uh, to help other people see God. That's the whole point, right? That is the whole point. But but before we jump into that, today we going to what I uh, what the Lord has been sharing with me is this: we're all on a journey, right? We all on a journey. We're journeying. We are journey men and women, or pilgrims, and. And that's pretty much the discussion. This journey that we're on, everybody is going somewhere. And interesting enough, in our journey, regardless of if you know where you're going or not, you're still going somewhere. You are either going somewhere in circles or you're going somewhere in a direct line. There is a direct destination to where you're trying to get to, and, and that is where God is leading you. Uh, and then there are some of us that really just aimlessly go about living life, and we go in a circle. But yet and still, we are going somewhere. Whether we know it or not, there is a destination that we are going to. And there is one particular destination, or two, two particular destinations that you are going to, which they are almost one and the same. They're uniquely um, com- connected is if you keep living, you are going to get old. You're going to. And if you are, you continue to live, you are eventually going to die. Those are two destinations that as you, as you live, and I know, I know, it's just like, wow, you just going to say that? Like, yeah, I know. <sighs> so I have to figure out a way to make it pretty. And It make, is pretty. You know what I'm saying, brother? I was it like, is pretty. How can I make that, like, <laughs> Not sound very harsh, and and you know like because nobody wants to hear that they are going to die, right? Nobody wants. I, I'm not gonna die, right? Uh, you know, and, and and a lot of times we we you know I'm not a parent, but not a real not a biological parent, but you know we train our children to uh, as though they have their whole lives ahead of them. You know, you got you got your life ahead of you. You know, in in an actuality. You don't know what you have ahead of you. <laughs> but those two things, living and dying, living to get old and then dying, you know, but, but dying is not necessarily at a distance from you. It's, it's ever-present. But, no, I didn't, you know, come on and talk about dying, but that's just a destination that everybody's going to. And, you know, there are a lot of us on that journey that we don't have a destination that we are seeking out. So that destination is vastly approaching, regardless of you being aware or conscious of it or not. Anywho, I'm going to go to Luke chapter 4. I know I sent out scriptures for John 18. We'll get there. But I want to start out with Luke 4. And this is Jesus. And I'm going to start at verse 14. Really, really interesting particular passage of scripture. Jesus returned to Galilee, and I'm reading in the NIV. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He was sent he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. 
the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fasted on him. And he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And this set off a, a chain reaction of Jesus, Jesus' pursuit to his destination. It was like some three and a half years later, right, he worked and fulfilled basically the scripture. <laughs> Over the course of three and a half years, rather, he worked and fulfilled this scripture. Jesus' journey was set out, right? And there were a whole lot of things that happened on his journey. There were, before I get ahead of myself, which I'm going to get ahead of myself because that's what I do. So, so he's on his journey, right? And if you look at this scripture, it talks about everything he's going to do that looks good, that looks favorable, right? It looks like, oh, man, dude, this, this is going to be awesome. My ministry is going to be perfect. But what it didn't show you in the midst of this was all of the hardship that he was going to encounter. And as a matter of fact, after he read this, he began to prophesy. He began to prophesy how, how they were not people in his own country and even people at the end of his journey were going to say things to him. And I can read it. Uh, I tell you, 24, the truth. He continued, no prophet is, uh, no, 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 sorry. 23, Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this, pro this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. But if you hadn't gotten down to that verse and you look back up to up to 18 through 19, it just sounded like, oh, man, everything was just peachy and creamy on his, on his journey to his destination, to what he pursued. What was he pursuing? He was pursuing to fulfill God's will, right? That was his journey. I want to fulfill God's will. That was it. He had blinders on outside of that. Everything outside of that didn't matter. He went on to prophesy that. I'm going to encounter hardship. Matter of fact, you're going to be prophesying on that day. You're going to be telling me to heal myself. You heal people in other, people, in other lands, heal yourself. Free yourself, right? This is, these are things now he's also including in this, this parable or this, this passage that I am going to endure hardship. I am going to be ridiculed. But, but yet and still, my eyes are fixated. On the destination. I'm on a journey and my eyes are fixated on my destination. The destination that God has placed me here to to basically pursue. This is where I'm going. Now, now, now. That's Jesus. Now all of us, I know it's only three of us on the call, but each of us have distinct journeys. We're still here. We're still living. God is still using us in our journeys. I know it in my mom's here as well, so it's four of us together, but collectively. Anyways, we're all on a journey. Everybody has a distinct path that they are on, right? And I'm going to say everybody, each one of us uh, are pursuing a particular destination. And we have been over the course of some years, right? And throughout our time here, we probably encountered a lot of things. We probably encountered so many things. Whether it, whether it be in ministry or just in life, we've encountered a lot of things. But the whole point of this discussion is to talk about the journey. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. And, and, and in order for us to be steadfast and immovable, we've got to be fixated on the destination. Right? If, if the destination isn't where we want to be or get to, we will easily be beset in between now and then, right? What have we been talking about? We've been talking about being a witness. We've been talking about being. We've been talking about doing what God is calling us to do so that other people can see God through us. But we won't be committed to that. We won't be fixated on that idea if the destination of where we're trying to get to isn't where we're really trying to get to. It's like, where are you really trying to go? In your, in your everyday life, let's talk about some journeys, right? There was a point in time where I was little, 
had no idea what I wanted to be and kind of some things. And then I wanted to do Kung Fu. I was like, oh, man, I want to do what Bruce Lee do. I want to, I, 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 Bruce Lee, he was, I, I was fascinated with the guy. I thought he was still living when I discovered him, but then I found out he wasn't living anymore. But anyways, I didn't let that beset me. I didn't let that cause me to get distracted in my focus. I continued to want to pursue his style of fighting. And I began to put my body through all types of extremities to get to that place, regardless of how people ridiculed me and talked and laughed at me whenever I saw a kung fu movie and then I started doing it after the movie. I was like, oh, I got to train. I got to train. And, yes, I'm being facetious because it was funny. Every time I saw a movie, it just it didn't matter. The, the boy, he see the movie, and then he, after the movie, he got to go do whatever he saw in the movie. But that was my goal. I, I was like, I, I got to learn how to do this stuff. I just, I, I got to. I, it was in me. It was, it was just, ugh, it was all in my chest, and I had to get it out of my chest. And, and I, I worked it each moment, each day, each moment, each day. And, and I know each of us have stories. I've been listening to my mom. She said she, I don't know how, how, how long she's been telling me about. She wants to uh, make wigs. And she's been telling me the process of sewing. She's been looking up people that, uh, that, that actually do it now. She's been talking to people, I guess, on the Internet of, of how they're doing it and how she wants to establish this for herself. It's like she has this destination she wants to get to, and nothing is deterring her. It doesn't matter. She's telling me, oh, it don't matter where I go, wherever. I'm going to do this. She wants to make these wigs. She's committed to making the wigs. And the whole point of this discussion, really, because sometimes on our journeys, sometimes on our journeys, well, actually, most times on our journeys, obstacles get in the way, and it besets us. There was things we talked about last week. Uh, where you, we, we get out, basically we get out of character because of certain things. And I know I'm paraphrasing, but we talked about, oh, well, you know, no, nobody's perfect. And, and no, no, of course not. But then there are times where really we allow things like such as obstacles to beset us. We allow things like obstacles, things like no's, things like, oh, it didn't happen in the time frame that I thought it was going to happen. We allow things like, Oh, it didn't happen the way I actually envisioned it would happen. You know, it, all of these things get in the way of what where we're trying to get to. Because I know I think I heard Brother Jim talk about this because of some expectation we may have, right, or, or how, we're, how we're perceiving God is going to do something. And that challenges us when it goes to or when it comes to getting to a place where we're trying to go. And I'm here to tell you, the only thing we should be focused on is where we're trying to go. That's it. Not how we're going to get it. Not how it's going to look when we get it. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Cause that, now that leads me to, to John 18. Why? Because, and I'm not, I'm not even going to read it. I know y'all have read it. But, but it leads me to that point because this is something Jesus said. What did he, say? he said, Pilate, he was arrested. He was getting ready to basically be, be crucified. Um, and Pilate came in there and asked him. Pilate said, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus was like, is this your idea or did somebody tell you? And, <laughs> and Pilate was like, am I a Jew? <laughs> He's like, well, why am I bringing that up? Well, I'm bringing that up because his own people were the ones who turned him over to Pilate. Why? Because he was the king of the Jews but the people didn't receive him as the king of the Jews because he didn't overthrow the Romans. They were expecting him to be this governor. And Jesus was like, oh, I'm the governor, but I'm not the governor that you think that I am. I heard a guy last week while I was in New York, I'm not going to say his name, but he was speaking. He was the keynote speaker at the, um, the conference that I was attending with Vince. And he got up and he said, because, you know, the school that Vince attends is a Christian school. It's a Lutheran. They're Lutherans. Um, but anywho, the keynote speaker was like, uh, Jesus was a rebel. And he was like, he was one of the most uh, rebellious leaders of all time. And I was like, yeah, that's true. He, didn't, he, he basically went against the norm. But he went on to say that because he was a black, black, all black, black lives matter. He was a black lives matter activist. 
he you can look him up. He I mean he's in all of this stuff. He he has the T-shirts. He talks to governors, senators. He he, he uh, people uh, want that his backing and his support. He's he's real popular. But anyway, this guy was speaking, but he went on to say that if Jesus was in today's time, Jesus would be wearing a Black Lives Matter T-shirt. Ha! No, he wouldn't. <laughs> he would not have. Because Jesus did not interfere or, or get caught up into social uh, things such as that. He didn't, he, he didn't get caught up in it. He didn't get caught up in the whirlwind of the, the Jews wanting him to come and overthrow the Romans. He didn't get caught up in that. What did he say? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Why is that key? Let me tell you why that's key. Because we're all on a journey. And I'm, talk, I'm going to talk about both journeys. I'm going to touch on both. But, but right now, because I'm using Jesus as an example, in that ironic? It's ironic because we're supposed to be following him, his example. But anyways, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, and this is him talking to Pilate in 18 again. If my kingdom was of this world, then I would have an army of angels basically come down to fight for me. But, but my kingdom is not of this world. But for this reason, I have come into the earth to be a witness unto the truth. And I know I'm paraphrasing it, and I'm mixing translations, but he's basically telling Pilate that I came here to, to, be a, to basically hear people and set people on a path of truth. This is why I came here. To, 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 to call out truth and set people on a path of truth. And what is that truth? That our destination is God. He created us. He established us for himself. That's it. We are here journeying back to him, period. He wants us for himself. That is it. So we live unto him in all that we do, period. That is it. And, and our focus is that, him. I'm here for God. I'm here for God to do whatever, whenever, however, it doesn't matter, through us, for him. That's the journey. And all that we encounter, for him. Now, we have these daily lives that we have, right? Stepping outside of this following Jesus journey, let's look at this daily life journey. Because in our daily life, things happen to us. Something happens to us. Things, we encounter things whether it be, it doesn't even matter, me growing up and encountering things or me being an adult and encountering things. But God has been taking me on a journey of life from my day of birth. He's been taking me on a journey of life. He's been with me every step of the way. There were times where I didn't know, but then I got to this place where I recognized in all that I've done and all that he's done through me or done, allowed things to happen to me. He's been with me every step of the way. But this is the problem, going back. When we allow people, just as Jesus was talking about in his hometown, over in Luke 4, a prophet is non profitable to his home country. Why? Because they kept bringing up his past. Isn't this Joseph's son? Don't we know his mama? Don't we know his daddy? Don't, ain't that boy a carpenter? Well, hold up. How are you going to sit here and tell us that this scripture is fulfilled in our hearing? There are always people throwing things at us. And I know you brought this up, Michelle, too, about all of the noise. You brought that up during the discussion last week. There's so much noise going around. And on our journeys of life, we get so much noise. We have a desire or a dream to be some great architect, but we come from a country of no architects. So people are telling you constantly, why do you want to be an architect? We don't know architecture in our city. How are you going to be that? You, you didn't come from a line of architects. You can't be an architect. Why, why, why do you want to be that? Why do you want to be an NBA player? Ain't nobody from the, going to the NBA in our school. Why would you want to do that? But then you got this noise coming at you. And, of course, we have so many stories where people didn't allow the noise to infiltrate their minds as far as NBA and architecture and all of these careers. But guess what? In certain cases, it does startle us, though. It startles us. So this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the startling because there are times when and, – and, and how do we get past it? I've already given you the answer how to get past it, but for people that – 
you know, that are, that are new to this and coming in through calls or however they may encounter this, this discussion, how do we get past it? The, the destination is how you fix You've got to fix your eyes on the destination. You're not going to be committed to anything you want to get to if you're not fixated on the destination. You've got to be fixated. Matter of fact, that destination has to be greater than everything you encounter. It doesn't matter if you have to go without. It doesn't matter if you've got to hit rock bottom. It doesn't matter. The destination has to be greater. I was watching The Pursuit of Happiness. This guy, and this is funny, I was watching it last Saturday, I want to say. No, no, it wasn't Saturday. It must have been Sunday. But anywho, I was watching it. may have been Monday. I can't remember exactly. That, that's irrelevant. Uh, but the guy in the movie, Chris Garner, he was fixated on this happiness. And in his mind, he equated happiness to being uh, self-sufficient when it came to monetary things. And he looked at everybody that, from, that worked at this particular building, and he saw them, and he said, they just seemed so happy. He even said that in the movie. Well, Will Smith said it in the movie. But it was written, and the movie was created from a book Chris Gardner wrote. And Chris Gardner basically saw these people working in this firm, and, and he was like, man, they just look so happy while he was struggling. He was struggling. His, his, his wife or, or girlfriend or whoever she was, she was always on him. Chris was a smart guy. He was always trying to be creative and trying to basically get his family put in a better situation. So he always, he, he always uh, uh, invested a lot of his energy in things to help them get in a better situation because he equated that to happiness. But before Chris could get to that happiness, oh, Chris suffered. He had to sleep some nights on a bus. He had to sleep some nights on a floor in a restroom <laughs> at the bus station or the subway station. Him and his son, he had to go days and times without eating. Chris, he had to go through that. And, 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 the, and it really doesn't, the movie didn't, the movie didn't highlight how long he had to do that. But, but this was the journey that he was on. This was his journey to get to his destination. And all of those things were obstacles to beset him. He could have given up at any moment. He could have, he could have said, you know what, uh-uh. He had his son. You hear me? He had his son with him going through all of his son was suffering the same things that he was suffering, but at a greater extent because he was a child. You know what I mean? So this child's like, well, you with a child where an adult cannot eat, but a child is harder for them to not eat because they're not conditioned to do those things. But, but anywho, that's not the point. But the point is, all of these things were, were things he had to go through with his son to get to his destination. He didn't allow it to beset him. He was like, I am adamant. I am committed. I am not going to give up. It doesn't matter what you guys say. It doesn't matter how many times you say no. It doesn't matter how cold I am. It doesn't matter how many places I get kicked out of because I can't pay my rent. It doesn't matter. I'm committed. I'm committed to what? The destination. I'm committed to the destination. He equated happiness to, to monetary and, and, and self, being self-sufficient. That was his happiness, and, and he got it. That was what he got. Now, now, after he got that, I would submit to you, he probably has encountered a lot more obstacles. He may have realized that, hey, you know, being self-sufficient didn't make me necessarily happy. <laughs> it just made me self-sufficient because he went and created his own uh, investment firm and he, you know, he's basically rich with money and all of that now. But, but the point is, that problem, I'm pretty sure he recognizes that didn't make him happy now. But what I wanted to see and what I wanted to point out, the picture is, the, the, the parallel is the commitment he had to, to be to his journey or to the destination while he was on his journey. He had to be committed to the destination while he was on his journey. You know, because we encounter things in life, and I get it. And this is something God has given me. He's a shorty showing me. He says, he says, I understand you have desires to be in other places, but I have you on this journey to this destination that I'm taking you. So I just need you to stay committed to the destination. Stop being so focused on the things you encounter on the journey. The journey, yes, the process is the building point, but that's not your focus, meaning you can't be focused on what's building you for your destination. You got to be focused on your destination. 
Because if you don't, then you're not going to be, you're going to decommit from your destination. Every time you're going to decommit, you're going to be like, oh, I oh, can't do it. Oh, mm, I don't know about this. Oh, and you're going to be guessing in all that you're doing. Why? Because life, you're allowing life to dictate where you're going. And you know what that means? That means you're going in circles. <laughs> you're going in circles. And, and 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 we're going to talk about this too because and, and I just the Lord is really pressing this on me. We're going to talk about this. The children of Israel, He marched them around the desert, and I want to say for forty years, and it could have been longer than that. And I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to tell you, let me tell you what happened. I'm, I'm, it's a spoiler alert, which you know you already know, but I got to say it anyway. He was basically killing off everybody that wasn't committed to the destination. And there are things, there are things in our lives, right? Well, he will allow us to go around in circles because he's killing off habits. <laughs> we got these, we got these repetitive habits that we like to do. When the times get, when we get in these ruts, it's like, oh, you know, this is familiar. I got, I got to do something familiar because I don't see how I'm going to get to the destination. So God will let me march around in a circle. And then I'll keep going in that circle. And it's like, whoa, man, this is familiar. Meaning, this place, and then he shows me because you've been doing things that are familiar, that got you right back to this familiar place, wherein we were supposed to be over to the to the far left, but no, no, you you done marched your butt right back in that circle, and you at the far right. We were supposed to be far left, not in the circle far left, but but far far left from 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 where your beginnings place was, but you got caught up. You got caught up. On the things that was getting in your way. You got caught up on them. Man, this ain't helping me get to where I want to be. In actuality, it was. It was. It's just a building. It's a building block. It's just a stepping stone. You just need to keep, keep walking on it. I don't like where I am right now. Keep walking on it. Just take another step on it. All right, I don't like it, but I'm going to keep stepping on that thing that I don't like. I'm going to keep stepping on that thing, and I'm going to keep allowing God to build me up for where he's taking me because guess what I'm going to get to where he's taking me because where is he taking me to himself <laughs> he's taking me to him that's where he's taking me this life this journey of life all it is for is for us to get to him we may have these kung fu was just one thing then when I accomplished that then guess what then I started rapping <laughs> then after that rapping oh okay now I'm playing football then after football, I was like, okay, now, well, all right, then it's engineering. Then it's engineering. Oh, okay, then it was marriage. Oh, okay, then it was another marriage. <laughs> that ain't funny, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You just be like, oh, man, well, you know, that's the next thing. All right, then it was another marriage. All right, then what? That may be another marriage. Then, then what? Right? That's life, though. Right? And you look over your life, and you look back over your life, and you were like, man, you know, Life has been a whole bunch of ups and downs and bumps and this, that, and the other. And we get caught up in the bumps and this, that, and the others. And we lose sight on the destination. When God is over here saying, hey, guys, he's waving at us. I know y'all didn't see me waving this then. I was just waving. Now, see, when we get on video conference, y'all will see that. All of my movements and expressions. <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyway, um. Uh, He's over here waving, like, guys, guys, I'm not over there. I'm not over there. Like he was telling Elijah, Elijah, I'm not in the wind. I'm not in the fire. I'm not in the earthquake. I'm in the still, small voice. Why are you in this place, Elijah? Why are you hanging out in this cave? We over here bottled up, <laughs> sobbing in our... <laughs> I don't know why this is happening to me. <laughs> and I, I know, I know, I know. That's kind of mocking. I'm patronizing, patronizing someone, and I'm not. But I want you to see, we over here sobbing, and we over here licking our wounds. And God is over here. Why are you in this cave? This is not where I was leading you. I didn't lead you to the cave. Allow that, allow that hurt to be a stepping stone. Allow that, that bruise to be a stepping stone to where I'm taking you. Where are you taking me? To me. <laughs> Focus on me. That's easy to be said. That's easy to be said, Corey. 
Yeah, it's easy to be said, but but it's harder. It's harder to be outside of the will of it. It's harder to be outside of the will of it. Easy for me to say, stay committed to God, but when you're outside of that, when you walk outside of that commitment, well, life is harder. Life is harder because you always focus on the next thing that's happening to you. It's like what they what that comment say? If it ain't one thing, it's another. If it ain't nothing. It's another. If I can't get ahead because I'm always behind. I can't. I can't. If, if we got these common sayings, when it rains, it and everybody knows it's just because we're so caught up into what the obstacles of life. We so and, and and God is over here saying, man, these obstacles are not obstacles. They're building blocks. I'm trying to get you to see something greater. I'm trying to get you to be committed to something greater than just your common goals. I get it. You want a big, fancy ministry. I get it. Why? Because of you, Lord. Well, 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 get me. (laughs) Just get me. And then all of that other big and fancy stuff will make sense. Just get me. You get me, and then it'll start making sense. I hear a brother from, from... the, the pastor from Hope City, he talks about how he gets so stressed out. It's like God gave him so much so fast. He's been uh, he's been pastoring for four years, and his ministry grew from, I don't know how many people that started out, but it was, you can count them on your fingers to, to now over 25,000. That's how many people. He claims to be part of his ministry. Then he says they have baptized basically over 19,000 in four years, Right? And he's boasting, not necessarily, not necessarily, but he's boasting on what God has done, right, in the sense. But in, and in actuality, though, it stresses him out. Why? I don't know. I don't know. But, but if I'm focused on God, then I'm not worried about this life stuff that's, that comes about and it besets me. You know what I mean? That makes sense? I, if I'm focused on God, I, this 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 grandeur ministry that he it probably envisioned before he got in it. Then when he got it, then it was like, whoa, this is overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Yes, it looks great in theory, but then he got it. Then it's like, whoa, it's overwhelming. 25,000 people in four years. That's crazy. Oh, he's the fastest growing church in the United States. They're writing about him. They're talking about it. But it's stressing him out. It's stressing, get that guy, it's stressing him out. Why am I even looking at all of that? That ain't where God is taking me. After the 25,000, okay, then you get 25,000 more. Okay, then you get 25,000 more. We talked about this a few weeks ago. We think that godliness is gain. Then you get after the 20, after you done got 200 million folk. Then what? <laughs> then what? That ain't even all of the United States. But anyways, then what? Then what? The focus is God. The focus is God. That's the the journey is to Him. The through life you're gonna have life journeys. That's the short journeys. But the but the ultimate journey is, is is one of two, and that journey may be faster for somebody. And it, I mean, this is funny too. I know I'm I'm pretty much done, but I just gotta say that I just might help somebody one day. But it's like you almost it almost changes up your perspective on age. Because everybody has a journey that they're living. Everybody does. And the journey, the destination is the same. It's the same for everybody. Regardless of your age, it's the same. Right? And I started out by saying we, we train children up like you got your, your whole life ahead of you. But that's true in, in part because you don't know how much of that life ahead of you that you have, meaning the duration. You don't know. You don't know. Right? So So it's almost like you almost have to start teaching people to – do things that will be substantial for their actual future, <laughs> right? You almost have to teach things differently to children. You got to teach it different. You can't say, oh, you have this life ahead of you. No, you got eternal life ahead of you. And to get to eternal life, there are some things you got to choose, right? You almost have to start ingraining that in their minds, that, that God is working a work in you. And, and, and you have to... Get yourself caught up into what God is doing. 
not what it is that you want to do. God will work all of this earthly stuff into you that is a part of that. Yes, indeed, he will. But the focus is always him. It's like you almost got to shift your focus. You got to shift how you live on a day-to-day. I know I'm done. I said a whole bunch. But anyway, um, I was meaning to ask everybody if they had a comment before I got on all of that when I went, you know, that diatribe that I was just on. Um, But it didn't happen that way, so I apologize. So I'm going to have to ask you guys now, do you have any do you have any comments or questions? Nobody? Go uh, yes, sir. Got a, com- got a comment. Go ahead. Death is a doorway on death is a doorway to life. Yes. So I don't spend a lot of time worrying about the doorway. That's it. It's what's on the other side of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's 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 one of the marks along the trail. Right. It's what's on the other side of it. Right. Right. And so people have spent a lot of time fearing death. Yes. They're not, they're not focused on the destination. Yeah, they miss the destination. They're, some, they're missing the destination because there's, there's something beyond yeah. death. Yeah, there's something beyond it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we and, that's a fund, and, and that's a fundamental truth. Yes. And, and it's amazing how many people live lives as if they don't they don't get that. Right. And you know, I didn't read like I said that scripture John eighteen, but it's a beautiful passage. I mean, you, you read that John eighteen where Jesus is saying, Man, for this reason I have come to the earth. To to witness I do. to testify true. True. To, to acknowledge it, to 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 basically share this truth that that God put us here for him. It, the, the whole uh, the, the cycle that we are on is from God to God. That's the cycle. Mm-hmm. That is the cycle. You know, and yep. anything beyond that is going to, you're going to get, you're going to get beset from that destination and you're going to get caught up into life. And what you're going to end up doing is going in this circle of living, right, until you die. And then I love this scripture. Jesus said, Every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow. And they will basically acknowledge that he's Lord. Whether you live like it or not, you're going to acknowledge it. You're going to acknowledge it. Why not start now? Acknowledging it. He's Lord. Why not confess it now? Why not live like that now? And then every all of your living changes. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. living changed. You know, I don't get everything that I want, but I get everything that I need and things that I didn't know I needed. And there are wants that I didn't know I wanted that I get, and then I'm like, oh, man, I want this. I want more of this. <laughs> there are wants that I get that I didn't know I wanted. It's like, it's like God does things in me that it's like to me and in me and through me that I didn't know. I was like, wow, I didn't know. I wasn't, I wasn't knowing, then I got it, and then it was just, he basically changed me all together. He's changing me throughout every moment of my life. He's changing me. Things I thought I wanted in life I thought were important, and he just, he, it's not. Like, people get on me about cutting my hair and shaving, and don't get me wrong, I do cut my hair and I do shave. But there was a point in time where I thought that was the most important. I mean, you know, I kept myself shaved, I kept a haircut. And I ain't saying I got lazy. I didn't. I just started devaluing things that I valued so much of. It's like I'll cut my hair. I'll cut it when I cut it. Then it was like, oh, can't go more than two weeks without cutting it. It was like it was clockwork. It's like what you trying to say? You trying to say people shouldn't cut their hair and do they keep they? No, no, that ain't what I'm saying. Not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. I'm saying God changed how I, my perspective of how I view things in life. There was a point in time where. It, I would be, every week, I would be at the mall buying some kind of new outfit. Wow. Just buying it, something new. It's like just, just going and buying something new. But I could still do that. Today, I could. And like, like not be in debt, and I could still do it. But, that, that, but God just shifted my perspective. He brought me low where I couldn't do it, but then he put me back where I could do it, and then it's just like, I don't have a desire to do it. Why? Because... 
I don't understand what my priorities were when I was doing it. Why was I doing it? I have no idea. See, my living changed. I started, I started doing more investing. You know what I mean? Not just for a return, but just for pe- investing in people so that people could see they got help. People could see that. They have help. Not me being their help, but they are help. God is helping them through me. And you can just eliminate me. God is just helping them. And I just happen to be a part of the help. I'm like, man, Lord, this is tight. This is, this is awesome. Your values change because I'm focused on the destination. I'm focused on God. You know? I mean, because so many people get affected by the journey. And last week, I can't remember verbatim, but things came up where a lot of things happen to us and we lose sight. We lose sight. Right, and it shifts us, and, and it and it wobbles us when we're trying to maintain uh, uh, being steadfast. We're trying to maintain, you know, being that witness, that constant witness. It's like, man, you get these slip ups, and why? Why? Because I, we're losing, we're taking our eyes off of Jesus when we're walking on that water. You know I mean, living is like walking on water. <laughs> Any little thing comes and goes, and we're gonna start sinking. Any little thing. I mean, I mean any little thing. Somebody rub us the wrong way. You know, our finances, we rub our two pennies together. They don't produce like we thought they would when we rub them things together. You know, so, and this is all about the journey. Well, if there's nothing else, well, we'll keep talking about the journey. Amen. Amen. Well, family, I hope the discussion has encouraged you. I hope it has enlightened you. I hope it has infused you with love and truth to live a life filled with God on purpose. And if it has, join us again for more godly discussions. Thank you.